Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomage and welcome back to the channel. If you can recognize that song at the start of the clip there, then you're in the running to win this giveaway. Stay tuned because somewhere during this video, I'm gonna announce all the details of what you have to do to make sure you win. So if you've clicked on this video for a very specific reason and you're wanting to find something about the S20 Ultra versus the DSLR, I'm gonna put a bunch of timestamps on the side here so you guys can quickly jump to that if you wanna know exactly what you're looking for and not waste your time. So starting off with the camera and the quality of the photos themselves. I went out today, which was kind of an overcast day with only little pockets of sunshine. So I actually picked a really good time of day to take these photos and tested it in all sorts of different environments. I tried to test all sorts of different photography between the two cameras. I went for macro photography, landscape photography, photos that require a lot of dynamic range and others that are just what you basically take on an every single day journey going down and finding a great landscape or a great memory. So I really wanted to capture a diverse range of different photos and hopefully I've been able to do that and give you guys enough information. If not, let me know what else you wanna know in the comments down below and I'll try and make that happen. So looking at the first photo is the original side by side of the Canon and the Samsung. As we can see, both the originals are pretty good, with the Samsung kind of having more of a higher dynamic range, with the Samsung having a little bit of a better photo from the get-go with these HEIF or HEIC photos that it does produce. And then obviously I didn't want to just produce straight out of camera, I wanted to see what these photos could be edited and how far they could be pushed. But the first photo, you can see that the quality's there in both the cameras. I think the S20 Ultra They've both been edited to my style, so obviously, if you don't like the editing style, that's completely up to you, but they've been edited to kind of match the same editing style I do for most photos, so what one looks like and what the other should be pretty similar and pretty consistent. In my personal opinion here, the S20 Ultra actually produces a better image from afar, but as soon as you start zooming into these images, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a difference. So the second image here is off the same church, the same position. However, using the 16 millimeter zoom function on this camera and the ultra wide on the Samsung S20. From the originals, we can see that the S20 is using that dynamic range, multiple photo blending to actually get that sky brought out straight away in the raw photo. So if you don't have any editing knowledge or any editing skills, you can actually take a really good photo first time without having to worry. When we edit both the photos, we can see that the Canon is able to bring back those skies, bring back those overblown highlights, and really lift those shadows. What impressed me the most was the fact that the Samsung had the same ability, not shooting in RAW, but shooting in these HEIC files. Now, these are the photos that I really wanted to dive deep a bit further into. The first photo is looking up at the church again with the Australian flag on top, shooting through the trees. When you take a raw photo, you can see that the Canon again blows out those highlights and loses the sky, whilst the Samsung retains that sky and both of them lose those shadows and the blacks go quite black in the shadows themselves. But what's very impressive is on both devices, when you put them into Lightroom and you adjust them, you pump them to the absolute maximum, you start to see that both the Canon and the Samsung are able to actually bring out these shadows, to bring out the height, to bring back the highlight, sorry, and to actually get some color, some contrast into these images that were previously just a bit of a dull and boring image. What you'll start to notice when we zoom in to the center of the photo is that noise, but then when we move out to the edges and look at the leaves, I guess the best way to describe this is the Canon camera produces a more natural kind of leaves blowing in the wind and motion blur, whereas the Samsung goes over the top and starts to sharpen these leaves and create defined edges. The only way I can really give you a good example is if you ever use Google Maps and loaded up that 3D version and all you see is some really bad pixelated trees 
and they're kind of 3D, but they're kind of not. That's the feeling I get when I look at the leaves and the detail from afar that the AI is trying to recognize. Now I'm hoping that being an AI software, it learns, it adapts, and the more photos I take like this, the better and better it gets, and the better the software gets with every update. So I'll keep you guys informed with that, but for the time being, unfortunately, it is giving that very strange, very pixelated, very artificial look. So if you're able to figure out that song at the very start of this video, and hopefully this video doesn't get demonetized because of that, I want you to comment down below and tell me exactly what song that is. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. I will in 30 days go and pick a winner for the grand prize. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you're probably thinking, what's the grand prize? What's the giveaway? Well, with the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, you get a set of free Galaxy Buds Plus. Now, as I've mentioned in my past videos, I have no use for this, but I'm hoping one of you guys do. So smash the subscribe button, figure out what that song is, and let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna give this about, I don't know, four to six weeks to let it run its course, and pick a winner from the comments below. When we move into macro photography, you notice a difference in camera quality and actual image sensor size. So obviously with a big DSLR comes a very big sensor. I mean, just looking at the size of the glass and how big the lens is, you're gonna know that the depth of field is gonna be very short. This camera has pretty decent depth of field, but when you compare them side by side, you can immediately tell that the Canon has much better depth of field, much better focus. What becomes interesting, however, is when we use the 5X zoom camera on this Samsung S20 Ultra and zoom in the high quality photos from the Canon, the Samsung actually produces a much higher quality photo in detail, in color, in clarity. So I was really thrown off there personally by the details that it had. Beside the church, there was also a really pretty green wall that I wanted to kind of edit to a very different style to see how far the colors could be pushed on both devices. What was very impressive is you could kind of get that cinematic uh, teal and orange look very quickly, very easily from both devices without losing too much detail from either of the images. And finally, an image shooting directly into the sun with a subject in the foreground. This is something that both cameras actually performed pretty well at, but you're gonna notice that the DSLR was able to differentiate the subject from the sun from that light streak coming in and really get those blacks, those textures, a lot better, a lot clearer than the S20 Ultra was. So from a quick recap of the photos we've seen so far, the S20 Ultra is actually pulling its weight very, very well. There's only a few situations where it isn't able to compete with the big DSLR, but at the same time, there is a couple situations where it outperforms the DSLR and I'd much rather be taking a photo with the S20 Ultra in an everyday situation when I'm not lugging this thing around. Now, a couple extra photos I took with the S20 Ultra very quickly without the DSLR next to me, predominantly for high dynamic range and color and clarity. So the first photo I took in the car with the coffee out looking into the sky, it was able to capture both the interior and the exterior phenomenally. I've tried to take that photo so many times with a DSLR and failed miserably. So the fact that this photo came out so crystal clear without any editing and then was able to be edited exactly how I like it with minimal effort and minimal distortion was very, very satisfying for me. And secondly, I was able to use one of my presets, which I'm not selling, don't worry, I'm not trying to flog anything off to you. Um, straight away, one click and edit it perfectly how I like it, which means the image quality in itself is high enough that a DSLR's presets can be implemented into this photo itself. Moving on to the video performance of this camera, and I think I really wanted to focus here more so on the super steady aspect and the fact that you don't have to carry around a gimbal to actually get some half decent shots. So for me, I wanted to test very, very basic situations in everyday life that you might be pulling out a camera or you might be using a gimbal for. 
So both were tested side by side on top of each other, whatever was working at the time, without a gimbal, just held in hand. The first one is a very simple test, just panning around in a circle, trying to capture a full 360 of that vista. You'll notice that the S20 Ultra produces a very smooth, very usable footage, whereas the DSLR is very jumpy, very glitchy, and not something you'd want to use professionally, personally, or anything of those sorts. The second clip here was filmed specifically for the warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro. I wanted to take both cameras down a narrow tunnel where leading the lines are very important. Usually if you have too much shake, too much jumpiness, those leading lines get absolutely destroyed with the warp stabilizer. So this is the clip with the S20 Ultra Super Steady and S20 Ultra Super Steady with Warp Stabilizer. Now we also compare those two with the Canon DSLR, no gimbal, freehand, walking down at 24 frames a second, and then we compare that with a Warp Stabilizer on it, which does a whole bunch of different things. And lastly, I wanted to test the front-facing camera's 4K capabilities. Now, the one reason I wanted to do that was because my DSLR doesn't have auto face tracking. So I have to manually focus every time I wanna go and do a selfie or start vlogging. Whereas obviously the Samsung has some good autofocus and it also has high dynamic range on the front facing camera. So this again, great stabilization from the S20 Ultra, very, very poor quality from the Canon DSLR. What really gets me is the fact that you get high quality, high stability from the S20 Ultra without having to lug around all your extra needs. The zoom test, I guess, is more of a gimmick and a way to sell this camera to the masses and to the public, including myself. It is not meant to be 100% perfect, I think. It's meant to be a demonstration of what technology is capable of and where the future is progressing. If you take a look at the 0.5 ultra wide camera, the 1, 2, 5, and all the way up to the 30 times zoom on the S20 Ultra, you get a really sharp, really high quality image. Whereas when you go all the way and push to the limits from 30 plus to 100, it kind of goes a bit potato. But that's, that's okay. I think the purpose here is, I know I won't use the 100 times zoom for more than anything else except showing it off and saying, hey, look, it can zoom a hundred times. I'm never actually gonna use that function and take a photo I really want to because I've been a landscape photographer for so long and taking photos with a 16 to 35, I'm not used to zooming into things and taking pictures of birds and things like that. So for me, that's absolutely perfect. I don't need it, it's a gimmick. But for me, it again, is the definition of what the technology is capable of and where we're heading in the future. So with these two examples, again, you can see the 30 times zoom, really good, really clear. You can understand the subject. You can understand what you're looking at. Keep in mind, neither of these two clips were filmed with a tripod or with a gimbal or anything. They were just held freehand on top of the car, or on top of a rock or whatever was available. So they are a little bit shaky, especially when you get to the 100 times zoom. However, even at 100 times zoom, with the crane, for example, you can clearly define that cabin, you can understand how far away it is, what the details are, you can gather enough information from that image. What you can't do is use that image for social media or use it in a professional setting. And for the last bit of the test here, I was on the road the other day and wanted to test the audio, the video quality, inside a very bad situation. So I was inside the car with some very bad road noise and some decent lighting actually at times where it diminished very quickly. So there's three examples coming up of the front facing camera, the rear facing cameras in decent lighting at sunset where it's overcast and beautifully lit in some poor lighting where the sun's gone down and it's just the remnants of the light left over from the day and of course, absolute pitch black darkness to see how much this phone can be pushed to its maximum. So these three clips 
are solely for the purpose of understanding the potential in different situations. So we've got some really nice lighting in the car at the moment. It's about 5.30, so sunset is definitely about to set. I wanted to pull out the S20 Ultra because one, we've got some really bad road noise at the moment, and two, I wanted to test the 4K front-facing camera and the microphone at the same time. So I thought this was an ideal opportunity for that. So the same road test now on the back-facing camera, ultra-wide. I have absolutely no idea what this is going to be like, if it's in frame, if it's in focus, one of the downsides of using the back camera. But it's more of a microphone and a quality test inside a controlled environment with some bad road noise. And finally, the rear facing camera, the 108 megapixel main sensor body is going to be very cropped in, I know that. It's probably 90% my face, but I wanted to test all three cameras in the same situation under the same lighting conditions and with the same terrible road noise. Okay, so the sun's now set and we've gone to a bit of a dusk time of day where it's not quite night time yet, but I want to test the camera again here. As we can see, it's really trying hard to maximize the amount of light that it gets and it's kind of overcompensating by yeah, too much saturation, too much pixelation, a little bit of smoothening and sharpening. So I'm gonna give it one more test later down the track when it's absolutely pitch black and see what happens then. All right, so this one is pitch black and the only light source is coming from the phone itself. I'm guessing this is a bit of an unfair test because not even a good DSLR would work here. Flipping to the back ultra wide camera again for the low light test. Let's see how this looks back at post production. So looking at all those details and everything we've just gone through, I think personally, on a very personal note, I'm more than happy with how the S20 Ultra has performed in these situations and the images that it's produced in the end. I wasn't taking a photographer's eye in any of these photos or a videographer's approach to get the best shots, some good B-roll. I was solely trying to get good photos, in good lighting and bad lighting to understand the capabilities. For me, the S20 Ultra has performed and it is definitely a phone that I think can replace a DSLR in an everyday setting. If you're a professional, I think it's gonna take some skill on your behalf to convince your clients that you're gonna be able to use a smartphone to produce high quality images just as good as this. I would also give them the option if they want to choose both. So don't go out and sell your, your DSLR. If you're a professional wedding photographer, for example, make sure you stick to what you know and slowly try and integrate different elements into your work. From a videography point of view though, I think the S20 Ultra hands down beats any DSLR right now on the market, especially for people who don't know how to edit, put things together, Premiere Pro, Color Grade, etc. You don't have to carry around a gimbal, you don't have to carry around 100 lenses, you don't have to worry about the footage being blurry. At the end of the day, the quality is phenomenal and I think the video, once we get a few more updates and the autofocus issues get resolved, which I'm hoping there hasn't been too many on this video, I apologize if there has, gets better, it will definitely be an everyday carry for most videographers and most YouTubers, I think, once the audio gets a little bit better too. So the conclusion, the S20 Ultra is beyond belief and it has been able to outperform my DSLR in these very specific environment settings. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2020 style. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.